Welcome to 180 U-Turn, the talk show that features some of the greatest conversion stories of our time. Stories of men and women who are on the highway to hell when they encountered a Damascus Road experience that completely turned their lives around. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, and today we're broadcasting live from Church on the Street, located at the Dream Center in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona. One of the top post-prison transition detox and rehabilitation facilities for inmates and for drug and alcohol abuse. For more information on their ministries, their rehabilitation services, weekly meetings, and special events, just hop out to their website at cotsphoenix.org. That's cotsphoenix.org. And if you want to write me at the show, love to hear from you, especially I have very encouraging verses. You guys come up with some of the right. I needed that verse right at that moment. Thank you so much for doing that. My email at the show is steve at 180uturn.com. That's steve at y-o-u-t-u-r-n.com. Well, we're day four with Elena, Elena Klockner, talking about her story. And, of course, we, we kind of euphemistically call Thursday Holy Thursday because, you know, we're going to talk about, well, okay, all this and now Jesus, right? right? And I find it fascinating. I love it when I, I wish we could do the opposite, which is almost everybody, including yourself, including myself, we always wait till oh, we'll try God last. Right. I wish I, why can't I just try him first? Because it <laughs> save me heartache and 10 years down as a heroin addict, and I guess I could go on and on. I could have time with my kids, and da 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 Right. But I, we don't do that. We got, it can't, the answer can't be that simple. It can't be God, right? It just right. can't be. But it turns out to be. And for almost everybody that's on this show, and people that watch this show respond, and they go, wow, if God can fix Elena, could he fix me? See, this is the, this is the great proposal that's out in the audience. I am screwed up. I got serious problems. I got addictions. I got codependent relationships. Could God actually fix me? And I would say the love of God is so great that if you're watching this, maybe he's reaching out to you in the moment of the video. Well, let's talk about we're in day four. And we're going to get into, hey, the Lord, you're going to get saved. I love stuff like this, right? The best part. The be the, it is the best part. Now, I, I, I uh, understand that you're, you, know, you were at a best, you were down on 35th Avenue. Let's get to that before we get into the actual October 29th thing, you know, that happened. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, you're, you're going back. Uh, I always like this. You, you, you get out of jail and you go right back into what you're into, right? Right. And I, it's just like as a dog returns to its own vomit, you know, we just return to our old self. And when we don't have the Lord, we're going to default to who we were. There's no way. There's no escape of that. So talk to me a little bit about this incident, and then we'll get into the October 29th two days before your birthday uh it was actually two days after my oh, birthday, after birthday yeah. and um that was actually the same day um because i got released from jail and it, it all of that happened on my way back from or down this way from jail mm -hmm. so um i when i got released from jail i was i was getting on the bus heading right back out um even after hearing about uh like we said yesterday on the the conversion of paul um even after hearing all that even after at that point realizing that god loved me um and well, well, hold, hold, does he does the god that doesn't exist love you well <laughs> no, in, in your mind though i'm just saying you know you've heard he loves you but he has to exist so you can believe it Right. Well, I think it was my doubt of, of me being able to be loved that was keeping me from believing in him in the first place. Okay, okay. Now, this is a huge issue here. You just hit a monster gold vein. If you're watching this show, that could be your pathology. That could be the sickness that we're walking in in our, in our sin. We don't believe that there's anybody, much less God, who's holy, right, who's going to love us, have any affection for our soul, right, who feels warm about us, who wants us to be in relationship with him, right? Right. I totally get that. And I, I just I just come to you, this is this is our sickness. We cannot be loved and God is not gonna love somebody like me. Look at my problems. Right. Right? Look what I've done. I screwed up my life. But God can fix anybody even if we're disassembled and completely broken apart. Now, what happened on that day? Two days after this, October 7th, you know, what, what happened? So I got released from jail, and I was headed back out to my mess. Um, I met somebody at the bus stop, um, and he got me high. So I smoked a bowl of G, and it was, it was horrible. Like, it, it was like the most horrible feeling I've ever felt in my life. This shouldn't be, because you're, you, you like this stuff, and yeah, you're, it's, it was, it's it was, enjoyable. Yeah, it should have been, but <laughs> it was far from. Um... So I, I really, truly believe that when I 
heard this story when I was crying, like in my in my brokenness at that point. That's that's when when I realized that it wasn't that wasn't going to be me anymore, mm -hmm. and this you, was you confirmation to that. Yeah. So this distaste, right, was your first indication. I am something's afoot here. Something's yes. going to happen. Yes. Wow. Um. So when I the bus finally came and I got on the bus, I was still headed back out there. Um. And I just, in my, in that moment, I just, something, something inside of me, I'm headed down 35th Avenue on the bus, um, and, because when you get released from jails, LBJ is on 35th Avenue in mm -hmm. Lower Buckeye, uh, Dream Center Church on the Street is on 35th Avenue in Indian School, so I'm headed down 35th Avenue, and just something inside of me is like, pull that string, Elena. So, I reached up, I pull the string, I pay attention to where I'm at, and I see Indian School, and that was like oh okay I see and it was God God mm. spoke to me and he told me that's that's not you're not going back out there okay but this is the God who spoke to you whom you don't believe in mm -hmm. well What's I guess I on? did at this point okay, I mean so, so <laughs> when he was real enough he was real enough to me to put the distaste in my mouth he was real enough to me at that point to speak to me it, it was kind of hard to deny at that point but you're recognizing it as such this yes. is the big this is the big revelation okay so you wind up on your out date in the front of Dream Center. Yes. Right? Well, did you just walk in and say, take me? Well, yeah. what happened was, because, like, I had heard I'd heard for a while about Church on the Street for, like, five years. But outside, it says Dream Center. There's a sign that said Dream Center. I didn't see anything about Church on the Street. So right. when I walked into the parking lot, I was going to keep walking. Um, but somebody stopped and offered me a bottle of water. And that was, that was God right there, too, because mm -hmm. I was about to keep walking, and they stopped. They offered me water, and I told them my story. I told them what happened. And I told them that I, I don't, I don't want to be out there anymore. Mm -hmm. And so he told me to come inside and to uh, talk to the woman here that, that runs the, the women's placement. And, um, and I did. I came in. They told me she would be in a meeting for an hour, and I was like, they're like, do you want to go and come back? And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> and, um, and I've been here ever since. I think it's something you walk into a place like this. You've had small little God indications that God is with you, right? Mm -hmm. You're taking your atheism, setting it aside, because now stuff is, is happening. And you cannot no longer dismiss them. Right. And I'm wondering if you're watching the show today, you're going, hey, you know, I've, I've had little events like this that are accumulating in my life. It's starting to add up, you know, to, there might be the, a God here, right? Yes. I, I really encourage you, if you're hearing a, her story, a, a Lena story, it could be your story, right? So I want you to embrace it. And so now you're at Dream Center. And, you know, Dream Center is phase one, 180 days it's going to be a little bit of a discipline, a regulatory change out that you're not, you know, you haven't lived before. Right. Yeah, they call it Bible boot camp because um, there's strict rules. There's, uh -huh. um, and it's classes all day and outreaching, which is amazing. Um, well, but yeah, I, I think you, was it you or somebody told me that you prayed more in that first day than you did in your entire life? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, like one day of prayer? You know, it's like a, it was like unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's um, prayer, I didn't really... I didn't realize at that time when I first came in, because again, I hadn't believed in God. I didn't know, I felt like I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to talk to him. I, got, I thought there was supposed to be a certain way mm -hmm. that you're, you're supposed to talk to him. Um, I'd never really opened a Bible until I got here. Um, well, let me stop you there. So there isn't a special way to pray. No, there's not. Not a liturgy, not a card, not somebody else's prayer that they wrote for you, not something nope. even in history that could be good and, and, and uplifting. But praying from the heart. Exactly. How you really feel, right? And expressing it to God. Now, when you came to him, I noticed in your story, and you, you brought this point, I think, home hugely. Uh, it was significant the way you expressed how you had hurt yourself. You damaged yourself. You saw what it did. And now all of a sudden you're saying, wow, you know, this is because I'm learning about God's laws, God's provision of the commandments and all this. It was for my protection. This is why I'm this way, because I've been so anti-God, yes. not knowing it, not right. conscious of it, but acting against him, against your own welfare. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, it was It was really, a lot of the, the first like week or so that I was here, and it, he really does 
prune us. He really does bring stuff up, like peeling an onion, mm -hmm. um, as they put it. So it was like the more I would pray, the more I would talk to him, the more he would reveal to me all the times that he was there mm -hmm. and that I would turn my back on him. Were you good with the pruning? Who's good with pruning? No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, just, I just thought I'd ask <laughs> You know, you're reading John 15 and you know, it talks about the pruning. It says, but, but I was a young believer when I first got this revelation. And it's not really that big of a revelation. It's actually written in the verse, right? Right. I read it and it you know, basically says, and he does this pruning. He does this so that we can bear more fruit. Exactly. I thought he was, you know, you go by a person's life. If you're in the middle of pruning right now, right? If you're in the middle of it and I were to observe you, be careful not to judge too quickly. I'll think, oh, look at that. You're pruned way back. Oh, my gosh. God must be unhappy with this sister, right? But it could be pruning for more fruit. Right. So and it's not like always that he's stuff. not happy. It could, it's, I think it's more like he's, he's really happy with you because you're letting, you're allowing him to prune you so that you can mm -hmm. bear fruit. Well, how's the allowing going on? How's the allowing going yeah. on? Submitting, just being here in his will, finally, finally recognizing him, finally hearing him, mm -hmm. finally, finally seeing that it's not, I, I can't do so you see God in the Bible. Oh, yes. And you have God talking to you in, yes. your, in your heart. Yes. And you have other brothers and sisters surrounding you that are, some of them are really godly and have a lot to say. Yes, and definitely. And so the input's been great. Oh, right? yes, definitely, well, definitely. Well, I, I think that's the kind of thing where I look at, you know, okay, this is, this is why it's so positive. That's why it's so great. Now, when you first got here, you know, uh, you said it's a boot, it is a boot camp. Yes. I mean, what time am I getting up? Uh, <laughs> our first class is at 5 o'clock in the morning. 5 o'clock in the morning. Now, now that, are you going right from getting up to that class or going, going up to breakfast? No, you're going right to that class. Yeah, no, you're going right to the class. Breakfast is until 7. So you wake wow. up. Um, they do the wake-ups at like 4.45, but usually you're already awake by then, and you'd have to go straight down to class. Okay, so no coffee yet till 7. Uh, no, we have coffee makers oh, in our okay. room. Right, like, exactly. we're... we're, we're okay. uh, technically advanced enough to have coffee makers in our room. Well, that's good. <laughs> okay, now, when, when you're first introducing to the Bible, now, I, I, I have my own uh, experience, of course, but what was it like when you start reading the Bible for the first time and, you know, you're kind of getting into it? Um, at first, it was, as I have, I was happy to kind of force myself into it. I started out, of course, in, in the book of John, because um, I had heard that that's where all new believers should start. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with that. So I started out reading the book of John, and um, it took me a little bit to really get into it, but like a good couple weeks or something. But once I actually did get into it, uh, it was hard to put down, like any other good novel. But I, I this totally one was all agree. true. I totally agree. When I first became a Christian, I didn't know anything better than a book starts at the beginning. I was 20 chapters into Genesis. And I want to love you, God, but this is a hard way to go. Right. <laughs> and I, I laugh now because Genesis is my favorite OT. Right, uh, right. But, but at the beginning, it was tough. It says, oh, no, no, you're a young believer. Oh, yeah, you need to read the Gospel of John. And I recommend that, too. There's more of what Jesus said than any of the Mar Matthew, Mark, Luke, and J Matthew, Mark, and Luke together. Yeah. So it's a lot of red letter uh, language going on. So if you've never uh, read the Gospel of John, I, I, always, I said this to my boss uh, years ago. I told him, I said, just read the Gospel of John. He says, well, when you read it, did you understand it? No, not all of it, but I read it in a sitting. Exactly. I well, mean, it was like, just feed the boy. <laughs> just feed him. He, I need it. And I, I, sometimes your appetite is greater than the nutrition. I mean, I don't go, I don't eat my salad and go, I'm just eating my salad because I'm hungry, which is generally my, my, my line, right? I don't go, oh, I'm eating that because this has low GI and this has <laughs> low calorie. And you know what I'm saying? You're, you're eating it. You're not thinking it through the nutrition, but I don't sit there. I'm letting, let, reading the Gospel of John for the life in it, yes. right? Now, I know it's doing nutrients and vitamins and things the Lord is doing for me, but I'm reading it because it's bringing a life. Man, I read this. How many times have you read the uh, Gospel of John, Elena, and you think it gets old? You're a reader. Oh, it, yeah, no, it, it doesn't. The Bible doesn't get old. No matter how many times you read it, any of it, it speaks to you in new ways. You you see things with, with new eyes every time you go mm -hmm. into it. And it's always because it's, it is alive. The Word of God is alive. It's truth and spirit. And I love this verse. I quoted it in class this morning, uh, Psalm 119, 160, where it says, The sum, S-U-M, the sum of your word is truth. Not 
the not some of the word is truth. Right. S O M E. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, we're going to talk to uh, tomorrow about all the things you're doing now here at the Dream Center, a part of uh, being part of the staff, I, I imagine, right? Leadership, yes. Leadership and so forth, and how God can take anybody, doesn't matter who you are. By the way, if he can raise, if he can raise up Joseph from nothing, yes. from nothing to become the second most powerful man in the world, I guess God can do what he wants. Yes. He can make anybody who's a nobody somebody like that overnight. Well, listen, for more information, everything is happening here at the Dream Center and at Church on the Street, just hop out to their website at cotsphoenix.org. That's cotsphoenix.org for all their rehabilitation services, prison ministries, weekly uh, meetings, and special events. And so until next time, I'm Steve Savant. And remember, no one's outside the reach of God. No, not one.